The Up series is a series of documentary films produced by Granada Television that have followed the lives of 14 British children since 1964, when they were seven years old. So far the documentary has had eight episodes spanning 49 years and the documentary has been broadcast on both ITV and BBC. In a 2005 Channel 4 programme, the series topped the list of the 50 greatest documentaries. The children were selected to represent the range of socio-economic backgrounds in Britain at the time, with the explicit assumption that each child's social class predetermines their future. Every seven years, the director, Michael Apted, films material from those of the 14 who choose to participate. The aim of the series is stated at the beginning of Seven Up as, why do we bring these children together? Because we want to get a glimpse of England in the year 2000. The shop steward and the executive of the year 2000 are now seven years old. 56 Up premiered on British TV on May 14, 2012. Its release in the USA came on January 4, 2013. Creation, the first film in the series, Seven Up was directed by Paul Armand and commissioned by Granada Television as a program in the World in Action series broadcast in 1964. From 7 plus 7 onward the films have been directed by Michael Apted, who had been a researcher on 7 Up, and chose the original children with Gordon McDougall. The premise of the film was taken from the Jesuit motto Give me a child until he is seven and I will give you the man, which is based on a quotation by Francis Xavier. The 1998 programme was commissioned by BBC One, although still produced for them by Granada Television. Participants, the subjects are first seen on a group visit to London Zoo, where the narrator announces we brought these 20 children together for the very first time. The series, however, only follows 14, Bruce Baldwin, Jackie Bassett, Simon Basterfield, Andrew Brackfield, John Brisby, Peter Davis, Susan Davis. Charles Fernew, Nicholas Hitch, Neil Hughes, Lynn Johnson, Paul Kleiderman, Suzanne Lusk and Tony Walker. The participants were chosen in an attempt to represent different social classes in Britain in the 1960s. Apted states in the commentary track of the 42 Up DVD that he was asked to find children at the extremes. Because the show was not originally intended to become a repeating series, no long-term contract was signed with the participants. The interviews since 7 Up have been voluntary, although the participants have been paid an unknown sum for their appearance in each film, as well as equal parts of any prize the film may win, says Apted. Each subject is filmed in about two days and the interview itself takes more than six hours. In an interview with the BBC's Will Gompitz shortly before the broadcast of 56 Up, Apted said that it had been a poor decision to include only four female participants. Andrew. Andrew was one of three boys chosen from the same pre-preparatory school in the wealthy London district of Kensington. The three are introduced in Seven Up, singing waltzing Matilda in Latin. At the age of seven, when asked what newspaper he reads, if any, Andrew stated that he reads the Financial Times. All three could say which prep schools, public schools and universities they planned to attend. Two named the specific Oxbridge College they intended to join. Andrew Brackfield's academic career culminated in his studying at Trinity College, Cambridge. Andrew subsequently became a solicitor, married and raised a family. He is the only one of the three Kensington boys to have appeared in all the Up films. Both Andrew and his wife are most satisfied with how their children have turned out, followed by their relationship. Charles, Charles Fernew did not get into Oxford saying in 21 Up he was glad to have avoided the prep Shirola Euro Marlborough for Euro Oxbridge conveyor belt by going to Durham University instead. However he later attended Oxford as a postgraduate student. Charles has worked in journalism in varying capacities over the years, including as a producer for the BBC, and in the making of documentary films, including Touching the Void. He chose not to appear in the series after 21 Up, other than the contribution of an occasional photograph. During an on-stage interview at London's National Film Theatre in December 2005, Apted alleged that Charles had attempted to sue him when he refused to remove Charles's likeness from the archive sequences in 49 Up. Apted also commented on the irony that as a documentary maker himself, 
Charles was the only one who refused to continue. By the time of 56 up, all references to Charles had been removed other than in fleeting glimpses of joint shots with Andrew and John. John, John Brisby, who was vocal on politics by 14, attended Oxford and became a barrister. He married Claire, the daughter of Sir Donald Logan, a former ambassador to Bulgaria. Brisby devotes himself to charities related to Bulgaria, and hopes to reclaim family land there that had been nationalized. He's a great-great-grandson of the first Prime Minister of Bulgaria, Toda Bermov. Brisby said in 35 Up that he only does the films to give more publicity to his chosen charities. In 56 Up, he criticized Apted's decision to originally portray him as part of the privileged upper class. He related that his father had died when he was nine and his mother had to work to put him through private school. He attended Oxford University on a scholarship. As of 56 up, he remains a litigator who feels very blessed in almost all aspects of his life. Susie, Suzanne Lusk comes from a wealthy background and was first filmed at an independent London day school. Her parents divorced around the time of 7 plus 7. She then dropped out of school at the age of 16, deciding to travel to Paris. By 21, she had formed a strong negative opinion about marriage and being a parent, though this soon changed dramatically. By 28 up, she was married with two sons, and credited her marriage with bringing her the optimism and happiness that was not evident in the earlier films. Her husband, Rupert Dewey, is a solicitor in Bath and they have three children, two boys and a girl. She became a bereavement counsellor. In the 7 plus 7 she stated that she thought Apted's project was pointless and silly, a point that she restated in 21 Up. At 49 Up she was convinced that she wouldn't participate again, but by 56 Up she admits an obligation to the project regardless of how she feels about it. Jackie, Jackie Bassett was one of three girls who were chosen from the same primary school as Lynn and Sue, in a working class neighbourhood of East London. She eventually went to a comprehensive school and married at age 19. Jackie went through several different jobs, divorced, remarried and moved to Scotland, divorced again and raised her three sons as a single parent. As of 56 up she had been receiving disability benefit for 14 years. Her family remains close and lives near each other in Scotland. Lynn, after attending the same primary school as Jackie and Sue, Lynn Johnson attended a grammar school. She went on to marry at 19, had two daughters, and become a children's librarian at 21. She later became a school librarian and remained in that career until being made redundant due to budget cuts. At 56 up she continued to believe her career as a librarian was of great value and it helped define her life. She was a doting grandmother with three grandchildren, and was still married to her husband Russ whom she still considered her soulmate. Lynn died in May 2013 after a short illness. Sue, Susan Davis attended the same primary school as Jackie and Lynn and following that attended a comprehensive school. Sue married at 24 and had two children before getting divorced. She has been engaged to her current boyfriend for 14 years. She works as a university administrator for Queen Mary, University of London, despite not having gone to university herself. Tony. Tony Walker was chosen from a primary school in the East End of London and was introduced along with his girlfriend Michelle. He wanted to be a jockey at seven and was at a stable training as one by fourteen. By twenty-one his chance had come and gone after riding in three races before giving it up. He was proud to have competed against Lester Piggott. He then gained the knowledge, and made a comfortable life for himself and his family as a London taxi driver. His later dream of becoming an actor has met with modest success. He has had small parts as an extra in several TV programs since 1986, including Winston Churchill, The Wilderness Years, The Bill and Twice in EastEnders, most recently in 2003. His wife Debbie was carrying their third child in 28 Up and she reveals in 35 Up that she lost that baby but has since had another. She admits that losing their third child placed a tremendous stress on their relationship. Also in 35 Up, Tony admitted that being in a monogamous relationship was becoming a strain and by 42 Up he had actually committed adultery, though he and his wife have got past it and are still together.
by 42 up, he had moved to Essex and by 49 up owned two homes, including a holiday home in Spain. Poor, Paul Kligerman was at a charity-based boarding school at seven, his parents having divorced and he having been left with his father. Soon after seven up, his father and stepmother moved the family to Australia, where he has remained in the Melbourne area ever since. By 21, he had long hair and a girlfriend whom he later married and remains with today. After leaving school he was employed as a bricklayer and later set up his own business. In 49 Up he is working for a sign-making company. In both 21 Up and 49 Up, Paul was reunited with Simon, who had attended the same boarding school. Portions of their time together are included in both films. By 56 Up Paul had started work at a local retirement village with his wife Susan. He does odd jobs and maintenance of the small units and gardens. Simon, Simon Basterfield, chosen from the same charity home as Paul, is the only mixed-race participant. He was an illegitimate child, who never got to know his black father, and had left the charity home to live with his white mother by the time of the 7 plus 7 filming. Her depression is alluded to as the cause for him being in the home. As the filming for 35 Up was taking place, he was going through a divorce from his first wife and mother of his five children, and he elected not to take part in that film. Simon returned for 42 Up and 49 Up, remarried with one son and one stepdaughter. In 49 Up, he and his wife had become foster parents. By 56 Up, he regretted his lack of formal education, which he felt limited his income over the years. He remains happily married and looks forward to the next chapters of his life. Nick, William Nicholas Hitchin was raised on a small farm in Uncliff, a tiny village in the Yorkshire Dales. He was educated in a one-room school four miles walk from his home, and later at a boarding school. He went to Oxford University and then moved to the United States to work as a nuclear physicist. He married another British expat who participated in 28 Up but was displeased with how her comments were received by viewers, many of whom apparently concluded that the marriage was doomed. She declined to appear in 35 Up and 42 Up. By 49 Up the couple had divorced and Nick had remarried, this time to Chris Brunner, who is 10 years his senior and teaches in Minneapolis. Nick is currently a professor at the University of Wisconsin Euro Madison in the Electrical and Computer Engineering Department. Nick appeared as a guest on NPR's quiz show Wait Wait. Don't Tell Me aired June 21, 2014, and spoke briefly about his participation in the Up series. Peter, Peter Davis went to the same middle-class Liverpool suburban school as Neil, who, like Peter, wanted to be an astronaut. Peter drifted through university, and by age 28 he was an underpaid and seemingly uninspired school teacher. Peter dropped out of the series after 28 Up, following a tabloid press campaign against him after he criticized the government of Margaret Thatcher in his interview. The director's commentary for 42 Up revealed that he later divorced, took up study of the law, became a lawyer, remarried, had children and moved back to Liverpool. He made a surprise return to the series in 56 Up to promote his band, the Liverpool-based country influenced the good intentions. Neil from a Liverpool suburb, Neil Hughes turned out to be perhaps the most unpredictable of the group. At seven he was funny and full of life and hope. By the time of 21 up he was living in a squat in London, having dropped out of Aberdeen University after one term, and was finding work as he could on building sites. During the interview he was in an agitated state. At 28 he was still homeless, although now in Scotland. By 35 he was living in a council house on the Shetland Islands off the north coast of Scotland, writing and appearing in the local pantomime. By the time of 42 up he was living in Bruce's apartment in London and Bruce had become a source of emotional support. He was involved in local council politics, as a Liberal Democrat in the London borough of Hackney. By the time of 49 up, he was a district councillor in the Eden district of Cumbria, in northwest England. Neil stood in the 2010 general election as the Liberal Democrat candidate for Carlisle where he finished third, receiving 6,567 votes. Bruce, as a young child, Bruce Bolden was concerned with poverty and racial discrimination and wanted to become a missionary. 
he was attending a prestigious boarding school. At the age of seven, he said that his greatest desire was to see his father, who was a soldier in Rhodesia, and he seemed brave though a little abandoned. Bruce studied mathematics at Oxford University and used his education to teach children in the East End of London in Sillet, Bangladesh. Before 42 Up, he married, and Apted broke the seven-year structure of the films to film Bruce's wedding, which was also attended by Neil. Eventually becoming worn down by teaching in the East End, Bruce currently teaches at St Albans School, Hertfordshire, a prestigious public school. Between 42 Up and 49 Up, he had two sons, and is happily married to a fellow teacher. At 56 Up he admits he still has a hard time expressing his innermost feelings, in particular to his wife, but is a happily devoted father and husband. Still teaching at a prestigious public school, he has no regrets at this point in his life about the development of his career path. Participation Record Influence the series has received high praise over the years. Roger Ebert said that it is an inspired, even noble, use of the film medium, that the films penetrate to the central mystery of life, and that the series is among his top ten films of all time. Attempts have been made to repeat the series with subjects in the United States, the Soviet Union, Japan, and South Africa. In a list of the 100 greatest British television programs drawn up by the British Film Institute in 2000, voted for by industry professionals, 28 Up was placed 26th. The series has also been satirized. The Simpsons 2007 episode Springfield Up is narrated by an apted like filmmaker who depicts the past and current lives of a group of Springfield residents he has revisited every eight years. The 37 Up segment of Tracy Ullman, a class act, first aired in 1992, parodies the series. Harry Enfield parodied the series in a spoof titled Two Up with his characters Tim Neesper but Dim and Wayne Slob. The original hypothesis of Seven Up was that class structure is so strong in the UK that a person's life path would be set at birth. The producer of the original program had at one point thought to line the children up on the street, have three of them step forward and narrate of these twenty children only three will be successful. The idea of class immobility held up in most, but not all, cases as the series has progressed. The children from the working classes have by and large remained in those circles, though Tony seems to have become more middle class. Apted has said that one of his regrets is that they did not take feminism into account, and consequently had fewer girls in their study and did not select them on the basis of any possible careers they might choose. Although it began as a political documentary, the series has become a film of human nature and existentialism. In the director's commentary for 42 Up, Apted comments that he did not realize the series had changed tone from political to personal until 21 Up, when he showed the film to American friends who encouraged him to submit it to American film festivals. Apted also comments that this realization was a relief to him and allowed the films to breathe a little more. Criticism. The Up series has been criticized by both ethnographers and the subjects themselves for its editing style. Mitchell Dunier has pointed out that Apted has the ability to assert causal relationships between a character's past and present that might not actually exist. Apted has acknowledged this fact, pointing out that in 21 Up he believed Tony would soon be in prison so he filmed him around dangerous areas for use in later films. Influence on participants over the course of the project the program has in varying degrees had a direct effect on the lives of its participants. The series became popular enough that the participants often speak of being recognized in public. Their opinions of being involved in the series are often mentioned, and vary greatly among the participants. John refers to the program as a poison pill that he is subjected to every seven years, while Paul's wife credits the series for keeping their marriage together. Michael Apted has commented that one of the big surprises between filming 42 Up and 49 Up was the impact of reality television. The subjects really wanted to talk about how they saw their contribution to the series in the light of reality TV. Paul and Nick were flown back to England at Granada's expense for the filming of 35 Up and 42 Up respectively. Paul was flown back again for 49 Up and visited Simon. Bruce was affected by Neil's plight and offered him temporary shelter in his home shortly before 42 Up, 
allowing Neil time to get settled in London. Despite Neil's eccentricities during his two-month stay, they clearly remained friends, with Neil later giving a reading at Bruce's wedding. In 56 Up, Susie and Nick are interviewed together, having become friends due to their shared rural upbringing. Awards, 2012 Peabody Award, List of Films and Premiere Dates, Similar Documentaries, A New Version was started in 2000, 7 Up 2000, continuing with 14 Up 2000 in 2007 and 21 Up, New Generation in 2014. Australia Euro by Gillian Armstrong, Smokes and Lollies, 14's Good, 18's Better, Bingo, Bridesmaids and Braces, Not 14 Again, Love, Lust and Lies, I Am 11. Belgium, Jammers, 1980 Euro 1990. Two-part documentary by TV journalist Paul Jammers on Flemish public TV channel about secondary school students in Capellen, near Antwerp. Canada, Talk 16 and Talk 19, directed and written by Janice Lundman and Adrienne Mitchell of Back Alley Film Productions. Czech Republic a Euro by Helena Time registered trademark A Tarkova. Rena Copyright, a single episode portrait of a man over 20 years starting in the late 1980s. Rena copyright at the Internet Movie Database. France, K. de Vien Dront Ills. From Michel Fresnel. Germany, Die Kinder von Goldso by Winfried Junge, set in former East Germany as well as in unified Germany after 1990. Berlin, Ich Bundesplatz by Dittolf Gum and Hans Georg Ulrich. The documentary follows individuals families or groups of related people in separate episodes each around one hour. The sequel was broadcast in four seasons on three Saturday. 1999, Der Prominenten Anwalt, Bar Currency Kermeister im Kies, Wilmis Dorfel Wheatland, Die Nahr Currency CHST Generation, Die Liner Z Hend, Der Ostiger, 2001, Grenzgo Currency in Der, Solison, 2004, Kinder. Kinder. ALTE Front, Berry Nagunjan, Recht und Ordnung, 2009, Ma 1 Quarter TTER Untar Paragraph CHTER, Die Steiger, Sche Paragraph NS Die Jugend. Die Car Paragraph PCKE Band, Der Ilmers Clan. Denmark, a GANG 0 by TV to a Euro. The show follows the children, born in the year 2000, from birth. Japan A Euro follows 13 children living in different parts of Japan. 7 Up Japan, 14 Up Japan, 21 Up Japan, 28 Up Japan. The Netherlands, Bija Voluasen A Euro follows a group of 17 A Euro 18 year olds. Bija 30, Bija 40. South Africa A Euro by Angus Gibson, 7 Up in South Africa, 14 Up in South Africa, 21 Up South Africa. 28 Up South Africa. Sweden by Rainer Hartlb. About a group of children from Jordbro, a suburb of Stockholm Fryen NN Barndoms for currency RLD, Barnen Fryen N Jordbro, Tilbacker Til Jordbro, Det Var N Guy N N G. N Lighten Flicker, N Pizza I Jordbro, Nyar Barna Jordbro, Alamay N Abra. USSR Former Soviet Republics A Euro by Sergei Marish Nyshenko and Gemma Jup. Age 7 in the USSR, 14 up born in the USSR, born in the USSR, 21 up, born in the USSR, 28 up. United States, age 7 in America directed by Phil Jono, 14 up in America, 21 up in America directed by Christopher Dylan Quinn, All's Well and Fair directed by Lucy Westfall. Released as a web series in 2012. All's Well and Fair at the Internet Movie Database. Married in America also by Michael Apted, Bibliography, Michael Apted, 7 Up, Ed. Bennett Singer. London, Heinemann. Stella Brozzi, 7 Up. London, British Film Institute. See also, Perspective, an episodic drama film, started in 2012. From Canada directed by B.P. Parquet and starring star copyright Fane Parquet, Patricia Tedford, and Pandora Top in a Love Triangle. Boyhood, a fictional film shot over 12 years as its young actor aged from 6 to 18 years, child of our time, 
a BBC The Open University documentary following the lives of 25 children who were born around the turn of the millennium, references. External links, 7up. At the Internet Movie Database, 7 plus 7 at the Internet Movie Database, 21 up at the Internet Movie Database, 28 up at the Internet Movie Database, 35 up at the Internet Movie Database, 42 up at the Internet Movie Database, 49 up at the Internet Movie Database, 56 up at the Internet Movie Database, transcript of a British Film Institute appearance and interview with Apted, POV. 49 up. PBS's site dedicated to the film.